Hitman, a technical manual for independent contractors. Originally published by Paladin Press. Written by Rex Farrell. Chapter 1. The Beginning As a first-class mechanic, you will become an expert at your profession. Becoming an expert entails research, reading, observing, and asking questions, as well as development of a wide range of physical abilities and weapons expertise. The preparations outlined in this chapter should be considered essential prior to any acceptance of actual employment. Your keen mental and physical fitness will serve as your edge between life and death. Periodicals. Read and reread pertinent articles relating to weapons and techniques that interest you in magazines such as Soldier of Fortune, New Breed, and Gung Ho. Stay abreast of new trends and developments, as well as new gadgets and inventions as they become available. As well as the valuable articles, study advertisements and classified sections for a wealth of information and sources for supplies and books. Check your military newsletters like Military Exchange. Your local library can inform you of what is available in this category. Just a, a comment about that real quick. You want to be wary of what it is you check out at your library. Uh, and what I mean by check out is actually check out and walk out of the library with more than likely uh, that record is being kept digitally, if not on hard copy. But if you're going to be at the library for a couple hours, you could probably crack a book. You could maybe borrow a computer so long as you don't have to input your own library card number on there and uh, thereby avoid having any questionable searches be associated with your library card number. Okay, books. Books on subjects relating to the professional hitman are hard to find. That's the truth, yeah. But there are a few publishers out there who have the backbone to provide those of us who take life seriously with the necessary educational materials. Paladin Press advertises in almost every issue of Soldier of Fortune, and other publishers offer relevant reading material available by mail order. Check advertisements and classified sections. And let's not forget reading for entertainment. With the right attitude and an open mind, almost any good mystery or murder story can provide some ingenious new methods for terrorizing, victimizing, or exterminating. Sometimes a new poison will be introduced, or perhaps a new method for induction. Sometimes the warped imagination of a fiction writer will point out an obvious but somehow never before realized method of pacification or body disposal. So don't bypass these physic these so don't bypass these fictional characters. Chuckle through the trench coats and warped personalities, but test out any new theories you come across. Yeah, it's essentially saying uh this piece is essentially saying to not let your mind idle, not let your creativity stagnate, not let your imagination um, grow. What is it? Yeah, not, not let your imagination stagnate. Don't let it grow old. Don't let it grow used to routine. Don't let it grow routine. Program it. For advancement, how about that? If it is going to be a program, make it a program for innovation. Constant, constant innovation. Daily publications. A subscription to your local newspaper may be the wisest investment with the highest return that you will ever make. Each morning as you sip your coffee and scan the local section, you will be met with a variety of up-to-date employment opportunities. So study your local paper carefully to see who in your area might be your next employer or victim. Um, yeah, I think the most significant piece of this section is going to be the fact that this dude is still uh, reading newspapers. Yes, I get it's written and published in the 80s. Newspapers were very prevalent. Newsprint was very prevalent then. Nowadays, everything is digital. Keep in mind, 
the newspaper does still exist in most every area. You just got to go out there physically and actually pick one up. If you uh, don't want to be on somebody's mailing list or, or delivery list to have the newspaper delivered to you, because nowadays even that might stand out. If you still get the paper delivered to you, you might be on some kind of fucking list, right? Um, that said, uh, local news, local news, I think is the best news. It, it, it tends to be somewhat neutral, even if it does have that local bias, but for the most part, it is going to be very informative, something you want to be keen on. <clears throat> Headlines. Follow closely any news stories about people who have been apprehended for contract hits. These stories sell papers and readers thrive on the sensationalism they create. Study details made available for law enforcement techniques, mistakes that led to the arrest, and methods the law used to obtain incriminating information. Learn from the other man's mistakes. And if he is lucky enough to be acquitted, make a note of the attorney's name in case you ever find yourself in the position of needing a good one. Speaking of attorneys. <laughs> Drug arrests. If the reported suspect posts a heavy bond, he is probably dealing in a big way. As soon as he gets back on the streets, chances are he will be dealing again to raise money for his defense. His name and address are right there in the paper. Is he worth a drug ripoff? Hold up, hold up, hold up. If he is worth a drug ripoff, or would it be more proper to... If he is worth a drug ripoff, or would it be more profitable to contact him discreetly about eliminating that certain witness? Hmm. Hold up. I think it's a typo. Consider. Consider if he is. Consider if he is worth a drug ripoff. Or would it be more profitable to contact them discreetly about eliminating that certain witness? That's probably what it means there. Political corruption. Keep up with gossip. All politicians are expected to be corrupt. But who among them is desperate or despicable enough to be willing to pay to eliminate the competition? Uh, note, a lot of them are. Tried and true methods are accidental death, assassination, or worse yet, political death brought on by scandal. Yeah, there are many ways uh, to be a hitman, and it's not always outright murder. Divorce. Follow closely news or rumors of particularly nasty divorce proceedings involving any wealthy or socially prominent couple. Chances are one could use your discreet personal services, professional services, sorry. I guess that would be professional personal services. <laughs> Chances are one could use your discreet professional services or perhaps some not so wealthy acquaintance who prefers not to become entangled in messy divorce proceedings may find it a proper time to collect on that old life insurance policy. Ah, yes, that old life insurance policy trick. Mm -hmm. That old life insurance policy jug, that hustle, that scam. Adjustments, thefts, cases where the law did not render justice, bogus operations that swindle ordinary people out of their hard earned money, all of these are potential opportunities for employment. Work for a flat rate or for a percentage of recovery plus expenses. I suppose what the author is talking about here is uh, pyramid schemes, like MLMs, operations that are really out there to, uh, to just scam the public, and just outright nefarious um, operations that are working to... Uh, to swindle people out of money, uh, swindle older folks out of money. Th those might be uh, potential opportunities for quote unquote employment where you can employ yourself as an independent contractor if you catch my drift. Classified sections. You can place an ad under the guise of a collector and solicit any particular weapons you might want. 
Uh, yeah, no. Times have definitely changed. You're not going to be throwing this shit in the classified section. More than likely, you will get popped. Uh, but I'm sure you can still travel around and find estate sales that are doing something like that. Or scan these ads when you are in the market for new toys and pick them up from private owners to avoid registering your weapons. Exactly. That, that's what I meant right there. You could scan the ads, but I probably would not place an ad soliciting fucking weapons. Get the fuck out of here. Classified sections also announce gun shows, which are an ideal source for all types of equipment at competitive prices. That is true. Reference materials. Local city directory. If at all possible, get one of these to keep at home. Otherwise, they are available in the reference of information section in the public library. Of the public library. If you have partial information on a mark, you can usually gather the rest without leaving the comfort of your easy chair. These directories are broken down into three categories. Alphabetical by name, which lists the name, the wife's name, occupation, and employers, a street address, a telephone number, and other living and others living in the home. The street address, which lists alphabetically by street and then numerically by house number. If you want the mark's address, you can also know who lives next door, the type of neighborhood, vacant lots, businesses, and so on all according to the information that was available when the directory was compiled. So these directories are what, being compiled every uh, two years or every five years? That stands to, uh, to impact the accuracy of the information that you'll find in them. Another category is under phone numbers. If all you have is a phone number, look it up in the numerical listing. Then go to the alphabetical listing and address sections to gather the rest of the information. Yeah, in today's technological age, you can just create a telephone number out of thin air that you can use for a cover uh, of some kind. So uh, telephone number directories maybe may not be the best anymore unless you're using the internet to either create one or search one up, in which case, you're still leaving a history. You're still leaving uh, a trace. So be mindful of that. The auto tag department, county courthouse. Often the books are left out for public use. Look up the mark by last name or tag number for address. So if you have somebody's auto tag, uh, their car plate, essentially their license plate number, you can look them up at the county courthouse. A lot of that information tends to be public information because they're licensed by the state. Telephone directories. For obvious reasons, it will sometimes be to your advantage to know the mark's telephone number. But don't overlook the wealth of supply sources available in the yellow pages and become familiar with, suppl with suppliers and readily available merchandise. It says here, but don't overlook the wealth of supply sources available in the yellow pages, those businesses that advertise in the yellow pages, and become familiar with suppliers and readily available merchandise. If you live in a small town, get directories for any large cities in a 200 mile radius. Their yellow pages will be extremely valuable if you don't want to obtain supplies locally. So if you don't want to end up on some list, maybe you want to end up, uh, maybe you don't want to end up on some uh, CCTV somewhere inside of a big city, then what you want is to find uh, those suppliers that are located on the outskirts of town that are likely still accepting cash or a handshake or some kind of favor for a favor, in which case you'll have some cover necessarily provided to you. And it'll just be, a, it'll just come included. Maps. A local city map is a must for planning routes if you are not familiar with the road systems. And of course, a city map for any out of town job is in order. You want to just have a map. Always keep a map. In today's day and age, I understand that a map is pretty much in your fucking pocket, but that cell phone in your pocket is necessarily 
uh, a fucking beacon. It's a buoy. It's a buoy out there in a sea of cell phones. And if some other, and if, and if somebody comes up missing, somebody pops up missing in a time that you're in that vicinity, you might become a person of interest. To avoid doing that, don't carry your cell phone. Carry some sort of physical map or memorize the uh, the direction, the the navigation. Rec- uh, memorize the locale. Memorize the area before heading into it. Turn your cell phone off. Throw that into a black bag. Do not carry your cell phone with you. Carry it in a in a blackout bag. More on that later, I suppose. Um, a large atlas showing the national, hold on, after maps, it says an out-of-town job. Of course, a city map for any out-of-town job is in order. A large atlas showing the national road system network is handy, not only for planning travel, but also for finding nearby large cities and alternate routes to the job. Uh, yeah, definitely keep an atlas on hand so you know the major highway systems uh, you have them on hand. Those highway systems do not tend to change within any short period of time because they're national in scope and there's a lot of bureaucracy that takes place in having to apportion funds and, and create construction contracts. Uh, those highways are pretty much going to be there to stay for the foreseeable future. Just remember that once you use a map, if you have marked it in any way, it should be destroyed immediately. And I mean, we're talking incriminating marks. Like if you're circling a city and drawing arrows and, and writing down times, uh, no, you definitely, after you're done with that map, throw it away. Record it in your mind and be done with it once and done. Travel arrangements. Start inquiring now about the various modes of transportation available for out of town jobs. Find out necessary identifications, advanced scheduling requirements, and time factors involved. File this information away for future use. Stop by and ask your local travel agent. Stop by and ask what your local travel agent can do for you. You will be surprised at the variety of services they offer. When you are ready, call and make the necessary arrangements by telephone using a fictitious name. They do all of the work in making the arrangements to your specifications and the airline pays their fee. As far as uh, using, uh, as far as creating travel arrangements, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely ble- best. It's definitely best and you would likely be blessed if you plan all of that in advance. Do not get caught uh, last minute in last minute preparations where... Uh, you will be caught up or well, you will be <clears throat> be put at a disadvantage and have to compromise quality for convenience. Never do that. Do not, sa- do not sacrifice quality for convenience. Shipping and routing. You can take a plane under an assumed identity and arrive at your destination in a matter of a few short hours, but how will you get your weapons to the job site? Question mark. Better start now checking into alternative methods for shipping your tools separately. The U.S. Postal Service offers express mail to most major cities, and the main post office is generally located very near the airport. By disassembling your weapons and double packing as a precautionary measure, You can send your tools to yourself under an assumed name, post office to post office, and have them waiting for pickup the next morning. Airport mail is not x-rayed. If time is not a factor, check into bus lines, common carriers, or UPS rates and delivery schedules. I think that was pretty pretty straightforward. You want to send something to yourself. Uh, an additional note to that would be to piecemeal it. If you can manage piecemealing, send yourself it. Send it to yourself in several packages. Uh, while it distributes the risk, you also do run the risk of a piece not arriving to you. That's why you want to have more than one weapon. That's why this thing says weapons. Locating the mark. 
an obliging postal clerk will inform you of the several ways of tracking down the last known address of anyone you choose to locate as a function of the Freedom of Information Act. One way is to send $1 and a written request addressed to the postmaster of the Mark's last loan. <laughs> One way is to send $1 and a written request addressed to the postmaster of the Mark's last known location. A Freedom of Information Act form will be returned to you within a matter of days giving the Postal Service's most recent update. Or you can address an empty envelope to the Mark's last known address with your return address in the upper left hand corner. Under, the, under your address should appear this notation in bold letters, do not forward, address correction requested. Within a few days, your envelope will be returned with the updated information. The fee for the service is 25 cents. Let's see, under law, the law enforcement handbook in your state should be available through any college bookstore where law enforcement classes are taught. If not, steal one. If such courses are available in your area, you may want to audit a few. How can you successfully evade the law if you have no knowledge of how it operates? By all means, learn everything you can about the law and how it works and how it applies to you. Learn what constitutes a good arrest and what abuses, what abuses, what abuses or mistakes can make an otherwise good arrest null and void. I hope you will never have to fall back on the information and knowledge you acquire but it will be worth its weight in gold if you ever have to rely on it. If you, and you will have the added advantage of using your knowledge of how your opponents think and operate as you plan successful jobs. Uh, the only comment to that is that it's the author who is uh, advocating, who is uh, insisting on you steal something if you cannot buy it. I feel like if you cannot buy it, you can more than likely borrow it. Um, if you can borrow it, by all means, I don't think they'll, uh, I don't think they'll mind much if you borrow it for, uh, what is it? For fair use, let's call it, <laughs> quote unquote, fair. Under miscellaneous, check every source available to you for potential information, even those cheap tabloid newspapers sold at the grocery store counter have even those cheap tabloid newspapers sold at the grocery store counter have classifieds that offer fake IDs, interesting gadgets, non-traceable mailing addresses, and so on. Seems like a pretty, pretty cool operation there. Hmm. Your public library more than likely has the local newspaper on microfilm, and the information section has employees eager to help you find books and materials on the subjects you are researching. Uh, yeah, I can attest to that. That's true. Chambers of Commerce will mail out information and maps of their cities upon request. Bookstores and libraries have reference books that show all of the books still in print and available on any given subject. Keep in mind, and sources of information, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, back one, yeah, keep an open mind and sources of information will open up to you, sometimes in the least likely places and when you least expect it. Yeah, keeping an open mind is a must, always. That's how you network. That's how you get around. As a corporate cowboy, as a fucking hitman, you have to know how to get in. You have to know how to get in, not just how to get out. Under fitness, your body should be as fit as your mind. You should be capable of running, jumping, climbing, swimming, pushing, pulling, or meeting the demands of any other physical requirement encountered in your job. This means not only careful attention to exercise and diet, but moderation if you are going to partake of tobacco products and alcohol, and complete abstinence from any involvement with drugs. A man who smokes two packs of cigarettes a day will certainly not be capable of running long and hard for any length of time, 
and his endurance in hand-to-hand -hand combat situations will be severely limited. By the same token, a man who overindulges in alcohol may be taking his own life in his hands. The use of cigarettes and alcohol in moderation is acceptable, although undesirable, but use of any kinds of drugs is suicide. A uh, little commentary on that is that I've seen motherfuckers get down with tobacco and alcohol and drugs and uh, still pull heavy jobs. That's neither here nor there. Your mileage may vary. A lot of these folks are living a very fast life. Uh, they either end up in prison or they end up in the grave. Um, those that I know that are still kicking it, it's just a fast life. It's a lot of wear and tear. You are not normal. Um, um, I mean, it's a thing of amazement. It's a thing of amazement. Uh, it says here, drugs dull the senses and the reflexes, yet the user feels sharp and alert. His confidence in his abilities swells out of proportion. His ego takes over. He sees himself as indestructible, incomparable. I'd probably say here invulnerable, indestructible, invulnerable. But no, the author says he sees himself as indestructible, incomparable. That image of himself may be the last thing he ever sees. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll attest to that. There are some drugs out there that'll, you know, get you out of whack with reality. and That'll have you really believing that you're Superman. I know folks, uh, I've heard of folks who, you know, pop pills, ecstasy, molly or whatever the fuck and go out and pull licks um, and really believe uh, like they're with the shit. But uh, I suppose there is a bead of truth. There is a pearl of truth here. A pearl of wisdom that the author is imparting onto us when he says that if you need drugs to do dirt, uh, dirt probably isn't, dirt probably doesn't come naturally to you. It doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. And so some folks have to be under the influence of something in order that will uh, facilitate them operating, you know, that, that will facilitate operating, uh, doing some dirt, operating dirty. Um, but again, your mileage may vary. Uh, there's some folks out there who, who can manage it and manage it very well, as reckless as that might be. But I mean, if you're living a fast life, what else do you know? I would advise that you slow down, but that's only advice. Don't have to take it. I, as a professional, never use drugs although I will steal them for financial gain. Uh, hold on, hold on. This is the author. This is the author, not me, not Alex. This is the author, Rex. Rex Farrell. Farrell Rex. I, as a professional, never use drugs, although I will steal them for financial gain or to use as bait or even as an induction agent for some chemical that I know will do an effective job. I don't need an unreal quote unquote high that can mar my judgment. There is no margin for error in this business. A single mistake can cost you your life, either literally or by providing the evidence to take away your freedom. Either way, you are just as dead. A professional needs a clear mind and unhampered reflexes to be able to react properly in any situation. This is equally true whether he is performing the job itself or conducting pre-job research. If you have to depend on an artificial sense of courage in order to carry out your assignment, then this job is not for you. Yeah, that's, a, that's essentially what I said a little bit earlier. There are some folks out there who might operate, who might, you know, throw back a couple pills and, and a little bit of liquor and, and, and you know, get real loaded before before uh getting into some hood rat activities into some to some shady some dirty activities and to them they they have i have a modicum of respect for them i have a different level of respect for them because they're a different breed they're a different animal especially when they're sober they're they're a different animal uh, they, it's just some folks can't operate if they're not high. I personally cannot operate if I am high. 
And there's just some folks out there who have to be in that zone. Like they're coasting. It's like fucking on ecstasy. Regular sex will never do it for you again. This is levels to this game. This is levels to this shit. Under combat training. If you are afraid of taking a punch again, this job is not right for you. No matter how careful you are, no matter how thorough your research, at some time, you will probably have to prove or defend yourself physically. Any skills you can acquire are to your advantage. You can get expert training in hand-to-hand combat if you can find someone qualified to teach you. Preferably, this will be someone with special forces training or the equivalent. You will need to know kill techniques as well as survival self-defense. You will need to know kill techniques as well as survival self-defense. And you won't learn these skills at the karate. (laughs) The fucking, the author, bro. (laughs) You will need to know kill techniques as well as survival self-defense. And you won't learn these skills at the corner karate school that includes women and children in its classes. Sport karate can get you killed in the street. That's fucking true. That's some fucking truth right there, man. It ain't, it ain't. It ain't your gym muscle that matters. It's your street muscle that matters. You should become so familiar with skills like breaking holds, throws, effective punches to vital areas, and crippling moves that will come when needed as a reflex action. You should be aware of the best barroom fighting techniques. You should be able to fight two men at the same time. You should know the best way to disarm an opponent and more. But such skills require real practice with a sparring partner who can take, as well as give, a good punch. In order to teach these methods in the proper way, your instructor will have to take his fighting as seriously as you do. Veterans with wartime experience and the ability to kill are first choice instructors. Their contact with real life and death situations has made them a, re- a hold on hold on hold on hold on their, their contact with real life and death situations has made them a bit unconventional. Some never again conform to the rules of society, and quite a few rigorously keep in top physical shape while stockpiling M60s and hand grenades under the bed in preparation for the next war. <laughs> Hell yes. I've, I've met a few cats in my day, and that, that to a T. That is to a T. The same man who can train you in the very best methods of self-defense and combat fighting might also be one of your best sources for accessory merchandise. His contact with other veterans will give you access to a chain able to locate almost any weapon you might request. The veteran with guerrilla warfare training will be a walking textbook on silent movement, torture, revenge, ammunitions, escape, silent weapons, and a host of ways to kill. And if by chance you accept the contract where a partner is in order, he may be the first man you choose to cover your back. I'm going to have to disagree a little bit. Not disagree, but I, I, I do have to comment on that there. Uh, having Calling a veteran who's been part of guerrilla warfare, calling them out of retirement, essentially. A lot of these folks, you have to understand, when they come back from where they have went, are broken. Broken in the sense that because they do not fit in society, they're more than likely already leaving a trail of some kind. Of some kind, where if they come up missing or if they have to skip town for a few days, if they aren't training in the same way this independent contractor is training, they're going to get caught lacking. They will be caught up. Whether or not they will turn, uh, you know, that, that begs the question as far as loyalties go. But if they aren't training to be a hitman, putting them in the position to be a fucking hitman is, uh, it's not conducive to, uh, to mutual benefit. The time needed to acquire the skills to the the time needed to <laughs> the time needed to acquire the skills of this degree will vary depending on your physical condition at the time you begin training, your aptitude for following directions, and your eagerness to learn. 
I have seen an eager student, one who was willing to put in the hard hours of practice in full contact sparring sessions, progress very rapidly to the point of capability in less than six months. Uh, yeah, just a comment. I, I would definitely agree. I agree. It takes uh, very little time, about the time uh, like a semester in school. Half, half a year, six months. There you go. Like half a year. I would say like a semester is what, like four months, five months? But half a, a good six months of uh, full-time work, full-time practice. I mean, even if you do have a full-time job, you can probably, you know, put in another eight hours after you're done working. And then you got eight hours to sleep, eight hours to bullshit. You got eight hours of work, eight hours to practice, uh, eight hours to train. Let's call it training. So eight hours to work, eight hours to train, eight hours to sleep. And you got another spare eight to fucking bullshit around. Distribute those as you will. Don't spend it all in one place. Or train. <laughs> or you can train. Mercenary schools. Once your fighting ability has been established, you may want to test your new skills at one of the mercenary or survival schools advertised in the various military magazines. Um, just a quick note, the author here keeps referencing military magazines. A lot of those magazines that they reference have gone out of business, like Soldier of Fortune. Uh, after Soldier of Fortune got caught up advertising actual contractual work. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, military, mercenary schools still exist, though I would not call them mercenary schools. Uh, they're more than likely being marketed now as survival schools or uh, non, non-permissive environment schools. Um, for more information, I suppose you could reach out to us. If you would like, follow the page on Instagram. It's Incorporating Associates uh, or Corporate Cowboys. I'm sure you'll find us. You'll recognize the profile picture. You could also follow the Patreon, a small plug here. Follow the Patreon, keep this operation nonprofit, and uh, allow allowing audiobooks to be published at a, a somewhat regular regular interval that's corporate cowboys podcast and you'll find links there to make any donations as well if you don't do not want to subscribe to something monthly uh, so under mercenary under mercenary schools the author writes once your fighting ability has been established you may want to test your new skills at one of the mercenary or survival schools advertised in the various advertised in the various military magazines look for a school that can teach you more than you already know and be prepared for one hell of a workout while you build your endurance and skills An added benefit in attending one of these schools is that the people you meet there, like you, take the game of life seriously. Be prepared to meet people who have the same interests in weapons, explosives, and effective kill techniques as you do. Some of them may prove to be very good resources or even future employers. They use the word employers very loosely in this uh, this manual. Anyways... Awareness training. It is estimated that if 10 people witnessed the same crime and then were separated before they could compare what had taken place, 10 different descriptions would be given. (coughs) That's true. No, that's fucking true. People rarely pay attention to what is going on around them unless or until it becomes of importance to them personally. This book stresses the importance of using disguise and false identification to foil positive identification. But just as important to your success are your own observation skills. Start now developing and exercising your observation powers. Make a habit of studying your surroundings. Listen when others talk. A man can reveal a great deal about himself through his conversation and opinions. Make a note of features or habits that can make one man different from another. Think of the people you know intimately. Can you tell whether whether they are right or left-handed? Think of the people you know intimately. Can you tell whether they are right or left-handed? What color are their eyes? Sharpen your observation skills. A first-class mechanic requirements. 
if you want to be first class, it says expert marksmanship, a thorough knowledge and respect for all weapons, knowledge through reading, expert advice and experimentation on accessories such as explosives, poisons and diversions, knowledge and ability of hand-to-hand -hand combat, top mental and physical condition, and common sense. And all of that just uh, all of that just makes sense. It makes perfect sense. That's the end of chapter one.